to the Italian Football Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Italian Football Podcast. I'm Carlo Garganese, joined, as always, by Nima Tavali. And on today's show, we have two very special guests, Matt Rosetta and Mark Consuelos, who are co-owners of Campo Basso FC. And they are going to tell us all about one of the most incredible Cinderella-like stories of Italian football in, in recent years. As a recap, um, some of you, our regular listeners, will have uh, will have um, heard our previous podcast with with Matt. Um, but in the just as a recap to, to those who haven't, in, in late summer 2022, Campo Basso FC was was bought by Matt Rosetta's New York-based holding company, North Six Group, and an investment group led or backed by American actors and talk show hosts Mark Consuelos and his wife Kelly Reaper. Now, what makes this story incredible is that the club was bought eight days before <laughs> the Italian fifth division football season started. And Campo Basso had, uh, as Matt told us on, his, on the last time he came onto the show, they had no players, no CEO, no sporting director, uh, and um, had mushrooms growing out <laughs> of the pitch. <laughs> so it's a pretty, uh, pretty incredible start. And... Yet, Campo Basso managed to, to construct a team to, to win the championship and promotion to, to Serie D because they started in the fifth, fifth division um, and then now have been promoted to the, to the fourth tier of, uh, of Italian football. And they actually did that with, the, I believe, the best goal difference in, in all of Italy. Um, as we speak now, and we're recording on February the 16th, Campo Basso are, are in their second season under the new ownership and they sit joint top of Serie D and are positioned well for, for su successive promotions uh, into uh, Serie C. So to talk uh, more about this story, we, we, as I said, we're delighted to welcome on, uh, welcome back onto the show, Matt Rosetta, and also to welcome for the, for the first time onto the Italian Football Podcast, uh, Campo Basso co-owner Mark Consuelos, who, who everyone will, will also know as a, as a very successful actor in the United States, uh, starring in Riverdale, All My Children, uh, Queen of the South, which uh, as I was just telling Mark before, is one of my favourite shows of recent years. I love it, uh, and and also most recently as a, a co-host of the, the brilliant American talk show Live with Kelly and Mark, which um, Mark co-hosts with his um, with his wife Kelly Reaper. So so Matt, um, thank you very much for, for for coming back again. I think this is your third time on the pod, and and Mark, uh, this is your debut on the podcast. So so yeah. welcome and, and thank you thank you so much for for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, it's uh, it's it's an honor. Um, hey guys, Nima here, and, and thanks thanks again both of you for joining us. Um, let's start with you, Mark. Um, it's your debut on the pod, so let's start there. I mean, just eighteen months ago, in uh, into or just over eighteen months, I should say, into the project with Campo Basso. I mean, how has the journey been so far? Oh, Nima, I got to tell you, um, of all the things that I've done professionally, this by far is one of the most exciting, most meaningful um, I, projects I've ever been a part of. Honestly, uh, when Matt when Matt called me, I remember where I was. I was in a cab. It was hot. It was August. <laughs> it was, I was in New York, and you know, I. It was part of a, a ownership group for another team that I was really, really, you know, and they, and they had made the playoffs the year before. Um, and I was like more interested in that. And they're in Serie B. And Matt told me the story of Campo Basso, how they were in Chi, and then they got relegated all the way down to the fifth tier. Um, they feared extinction. We have no coach. We have no players. We have no, you know, sporting director. Um, I said, well, how, many, how much time do we have? He goes, just, I don't know, eight, ten, eight, ten days, something like that. <laughs> I go, this sounds like a really crazy idea. He goes, it's pretty crazy, right? I go, yeah, I'll do it. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> and we really haven't looked back since. It's been, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been very Italian, very Italian, a lot, a lot of like really great highs, a lot of a lot of like things to navigate, um, but in the best possible way. Um, I'm honored to be part of uh, to be on uh, you know on the on this boat that is led by our fearless leader Matt Rosetta. 
Um, you mentioned that you were also involved in another Serie B uh, team ownership. Which team was that? And and that, and, and how how did you first? Was that your first involvement in in, in the world of? Yeah, soccer? it was. Matt, we can talk about this, obviously. Yeah, course, course, it was yeah. Ascoli. My, uh, North Six owns a oh, minority. Okay. Yeah, minority uh, uh, share of it, with the with the with the hopes of obviously you know getting getting majority share and some control. Uh, but this was that what made what made this more attractive was that we had complete control. Hmm. and could you know we we would live and die by our decisions and not just having to stand by and 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 watch kind of on the sidelines yeah i get that and i mean i guess we're getting involved in the world of soccer is, is something that you've always dreamed of doing no <laughs> <laughs> no i love i mean listen i grew up in italy uh i spent the first five and a half years of my life in italy um my mom's italian it's my first language um, you know, in the late seventies, early eighties, Serie A was it, you know, I had the posters of those guys on my wall. I had the 82 world championship team on my wall, you know, all those guys. Um, and so I had dreams and I played. And so that was my like dreams of playing like in mm. Italy were like, you know, and I, I was a kid, you know, at that point I'd moved back to the United States, you know, and I was, you know, growing up in the United States. So obviously that was just a pipe dream, but it was, you know, you dream, you, those dreams seem really real when you're, when you're a kid, but that was the closest thing I could ever, I, ownership um, of a team, never in my wildest dreams. I didn't think it was possible. Um, I couldn't do it by myself. I wouldn't know where to start. So um, this felt like the just um, right amount of participation that I could have that Matt would allow me. <laughs> uh, to enjoy the owner, you know, to be a part owner of 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 not only an amazing an amazing historical team in in Italy, but part of if we do everything that we're that we're meant to do, part of a great story, a really great story. Absolutely. I mean, how did you and Matt get to know each other, uh, and and how did you get into business with one another? Matt Matt and I had a, a mutual a mutual friend that um, my son was in the you know in the, in some of the soccer leagues here in New York City, and one of his coaches was connected with Matt, and they just called me up and said, "Hey, would you like to be part of this group?" And I I, I thought about it for for a minute. I did think about it for a minute before I got involved in the Ascoli project. But um, after meeting Matt and, and hearing his vision uh, for Ascoli and what they wanted to do eventually, um, when Campobasso was not part of this at all, when, but when that became part of the deal, I was like, wow, this seems actually a little more interesting. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Matt, I'm just going to turn to you. I mean, to talk a little bit more about the season, you're fighting it out at the top. <laughs> Uh, of the table with San Benedicte, is it? Um, how confident are you of getting promoted this season? We feel we feel good. It's been uh, first off, it's great to see you, Nima, and got, got a little thanks for the invite. Um, you know, Mark Mark nailed it. It's been uh, for me the Campo Basso project. Uh, you know, is one of the most meaningful uh, projects that I've ever been a part of in my career. And just to be able to go through each step from you know from day one with great partners by my side. You know, Mark and I have made. You know, he's he's underselling, I think, a lot of the, uh, the 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 value and decisions he's brought to the table. I mean, we um, I, I flew back from Italy. It was when was it? It was late September, early October, and uh, we didn't start out the season quite as we had hoped. You know, five games into the season, I think we had seven points. Uh, there were things that I was seeing firsthand in the locker room that uh, I wasn't really uh, in love with. Mark and I talked about it up until we were up together to like one in the morning on the phone on, you know, WhatsApp and all that. And uh, three hours later, we had a new coach. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and a sporting director. And a new sporting director. Yeah. So, um, you know, but look, these, these projects, you look, you have to um, believe in yourself. You have to not be afraid to make courageous decisions. Mm. Um, and you have to, like Mark said, you have to be prepared to live and die uh, by the decisions you make. And I think that has been the coolest thing for us is that win, lose, or draw, you know, we're writing our own check. It's our destiny. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's cool. And it's also been, it's great to go, you know, through those cycles with, cause it gets lonely, you know, it's lonely at the top, you know, when you're doing this stuff. So to be able to do that with great partners like Mark, and we have a bunch of others in the group who are really grateful to be a part of it's, uh, for me, it's the coolest thing in the world. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, I'm, I'm sure that if, I mean, if you guys were to get promoted this season, is there an ultimate goal? Uh, surely that has to be the Serie A, right? Absolutely. In fact, I, I dance around your question, Nima, but the, 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 the short answer is absolutely. We, uh, we believe in the team. You know, right now we're 12, 
12 matches away. We're tied for first place. When Mark and I made that decision we made a few months ago, I think we were what were we, seven or eight points or something like that, right out of first. Hmm. Now we're tied for first. Uh, and um, got to believe. You got to believe. So anything can happen. You know, they say La Pala Rotonda. So <laughs> the ball is round. Anything can happen. But we uh, we believe in the team. And the cool thing is that this is just very much, you know, still in its infancy. You know, we just got this started. You know, Carlo gave the background um, so eloquently. You know, this project is less than two years old. We had to start all the way down from the fifth tier. And sometimes we lose sight of that perspective that this is still very much at the beginning stages. And Everyone in this project, from Mark to me to the rest of our partners, down to the coaching staff to our fans, uh, everybody is dreaming very big. And uh, you know, we're not going to give up on this thing until we, uh, you know, we, we accomplish those dreams. Or you have to kill us, you know, before uh, before we get a chance. We're going to we're going to keep we're going to keep fighting, or we're going to you know we're going to die trying. Well, we're we're all hoping that you guys get promoted to Serie C. But one thing I wanted to talk to you and hear your pick your brain a little bit about is a number of Italian top teams are now creating these so-called next-gen teams, and they're getting access to Serie C, Juve, Atalanta, now Milan. How do you feel about that? Do you think it's fair on people like yourselves who, you know, you work your way up and they just get instant access? Well, I think it started back with, I think Barcelona was probably one of yeah. the earlier ones to do that. If you, So and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Juve's U23 team almost made Serie B. Couple mm -hmm. years ago, I think, right? I think they lost in like the semifinals mm -hmm. of the playoffs. For me, look, if it's good for Italian football, it's good for for everybody. And um, you know, I think there's only two or three teams, Nima, like that this year. But look, it makes it make it keeps everybody on their game. You know, Juventus and Atalanta, they can have a, you know, they can have a youth a development team that you know rivals other Serie C teams. It keeps us on our toes. So that that's the cool thing I think about European football. And you know, Mark and I talk about this all the time. It's um, it's a meritocracy, right? And, you know, you live and die with um, your decisions. And if you do a good job, you get promoted. If you do a bad job, you get relegated. It's a pretty easy, you know, pretty simple formula. Um, and I think whether it's the U, you know, the U23 team of Juventus or whether it's Palermo, who, you know, started from Serie D or, you know, whomever it, it is, um, it's a meritocracy. So if you deserve to be promoted on the pitch, that's what's going to happen. Absolutely. And um, coming back to Mark now, I mean, due to the kind of, let's say, the high profile ownership, uh, Campobasso have been called the, the Wrexham of Italy by, by some. In, in, that's in reference to the, the British club Wrexham, who, whose owners, of course, are uh, Hollywood stars Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. And they took over Wrexham as well, actually, in the in the fifth division of, of English football. And they, they've got them promoted into the Football League now. I think they're in the fourth division now. What, what do what do you think of of that comparison, uh, Mark? Oh gosh, it's a. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I think what the, what those guys have done, um, not only with with Wrexham, but for just the um, awareness of how European football works. Most Americans don't had no idea about relegation and promotion, and, you know what what that meant, and and you know. Uh, now they, you know, I, I guess you could also give that Ted Lasso it was also yeah. very instrumental in that. I think they've done a great job. You know, I think we're different in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we, um, I think we're almost 100% American, Italian, American owned. That's right. So we all have roots. We have roots in Italy. Um, I have family in Italy. Um, you know, uh, Kelly, we, we, we don't want to publicize this too much, but who cares? Her town, she, her parents are from San Benitez del Tronto. That's where they're oh, from. Wow. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it makes, you know, and, and she's never been back. She's never been there to see where she's from. So I think that would be different if we did do something like this. We would go and explore our roots, which are very, you know, much, you know, real. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I also think that Italy compared to Wales, that we definitely know the cakes are better and, and, and the foods <laughs> are better. That's, that's not, that's indisputable. It's indisputable. Um, I think the people, you know, the, the people are similar. I guess it's a hardworking, you know, blue collar region. Um, but you know, it, it, gosh, if that's, if that's a comparison, I've heard a lot, a lot worse comparisons. Yeah, the, the the weather's that's certainly better as well in, sure. uh, in Italy than, than it is in Wales. Um, yeah, I do want to delve into after more about kind of uh, you know your upbringing in Italy. So we will get into that afterwards, uh, and I guess Kelly as well. It's very interesting. But I mean, with with the Wrexham, I mean, 
can we organise a, a pre-season friendly? Wrexham against Campo Basso? I mean, listen yeah. to this. Bill, Bill it as Reynolds and McElhenney against... Ripper and Consuelos. Reynolds and Reaper, maybe. <laughs> against Ripper and Consuelos, yeah. yeah. I would do that in a second. You know, I I, <laughs> I, I think I should reach out to um, those guys and just uh, make make the offer. Hopefully they, they get promoted and we get promoted. Yeah. Um, but it's also a question of like, you know, so Matt and I were talking about this. <laughs> right? how, do you, how do you think, how do you think a Sadia, let's say, let's say we're in Sadia Chi, right? And how, do, how does a Sadia Chi team do against a fourth, fourth tier Wrexham? What, yeah. what, are, what are the comparisons? Are they pretty similar? Mm -hmm. Sadia Chi and fourth tier, do you think? I think well, I think if you're asking third tier, which is the league league one yeah. in England, that's the third tier against the Serie Chi team. I think financially, there's definitely a lot more money in the English game. But that's unfortunately that's just how things are at the moment. The, the yeah. money in the English game. So I guess it would be quite difficult. But I mean, you know, you guys are building a great thing there, and you know, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Well, I mean, I think it'd be I think it'd be a guaranteed commercial here anyway. That's for sure. I agree. <laughs> I think it'd be amazing. I think it's great. Mark, Mark and I were talking about this exact topic yesterday, and he said, "Well, we, let's do it, but we we got to win, so we got we got <laughs> we got to rethink our the whole construct of our roster. <laughs> we're in it to catch our breath, but we we're in it to win it." No what did you what. say, Matt? You said we we would do what? You That's said. Well, so well, I said we would play a little Catenaccio, I think. Of course. I mean, you said you said we would we would we wouldn't be we wouldn't be uh, embarrassed. embarrassed. Oh yeah, but Mark wasn't having that. I'm like, that's not what I'm not looking to go a game, go into a game and not be embarrassed. That's <laughs> that's like well, look, if it's a friendly, you, you want to do the friendly like in August, like during the, the hottest period of the year, and there's no <laughs> way, no way the the, the Wrexham players, the Welsh players, are going to be able to handle that. No <laughs> in in Italy or in like in Florida or in Miami. <laughs> yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the question to either of you here. I mean, I guess you, we were touching on this, but Wrexham made a sports documentary series called "Welcome to Wrexham." I don't know if you guys have seen it, but yeah. it's won multiple awards. It's really good. It, in, it won five Emmys. I mean, is this something that you guys have considered <laughs> doing, like a documentary series on on Campo Basso? It's definitely something we we're we're exploring. Um, even be, even you know two years ago we started talking about, it, or eighteen months ago we started talking about it. Um, I think again, like I pointed out, some of the differences um, where, where it would be different enough, and I think interesting enough. And let's face it, when people watch a, a program that they're streaming, and I loved Wrexham. I absolutely loved it. I I binged it. I consumed it. I cried. I was excited. You know. Um, and then when it was over, I was like, I wish there was something else I could watch along with this. So that's kind of like my attitude. I think there's space. Uh, I don't know. I think um, we, there's definitely been conversations. Uh, Matt, I just uh, I had a question for you. Um, I mean, on our podcast, we often get asked by our listeners uh, of teams to go and watch in Italy and stadiums and cities to visit. So for any football fan who wants to visit Campobasso, what makes it so special and, and where do you recommend that people should visit? I think the thing that makes it most special and, and Mark, you know, has seen it firsthand too with, with me is the authenticity. You know, that's that to me, that's the most important thing, even, you know, in this day and age, Neiman and Carlo of, you know, social media, Instagram, you know, even the most hidden places in Italy have kind of become mainstream, you know, but Molise and Campobasso in particular, I think are still, um, you know, beautiful regions, uh, virgin regions. I'm still very um, much undiscovered, even by Italians. And I think you really get an authentic glimpse of what Italian culture is all about when you get there. And then obviously for, for football fans, our club is the hope and dreams uh, of the entire region. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the identity of this region. You know, Molise of the 20 regions in Italy is one of the poorest uh, of all the 20 regions. Even in Italy, they say, you know, Molise non esiste, kind of as a batuta, you know, at times. Um, you know, but when you get there, you, you feel connected to the region. You feel connected to the people. I think that's one thing, you know, I don't, don't want to speak for Mark, but we talk about this all the time. I think we feel a, an incredible sense of responsibility, you know, to these people, um, mm -hmm. to bring them to places that they've never been. And in many cases, they don't even know that, you know, a lot of times when I do press conferences over there, I have to remind the region, we believe in the potential of these people, sometimes more than they believe in themselves. Mm. And I think the 
I think the soccer team, the football club is really the representation of that, you know, to get this club all the way one day to Serie A for me would be, you know, one of the greatest accomplishments of my career, not just because it's a sporting accomplishment, but I think because we would show an entire region and, and population that they're capable of achieving things that maybe they never uh, believed they could achieve. Mm. Yeah, and if they went to the game like I did, and uh, I went to a game last year, but it wasn't at home. It was at a neutral site. It was the last game of the season. Um, but I went to a game this year just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the, tif- the the tifosi in the in the in the curve there. Um, you know, I brought my my daughter was in London. She flew in for the game, and she's like, "Are they really going to sing and dance and and chant the whole game?" I said, "Yeah." Yeah. And then the, then the smoke started and then some, you know, maybe a little fireworks started happening, but I think for a football fan, um, they would experience uh, a fan base. That's probably the equivalent of higher, definitely higher classifications, um, which made it really, really, really exciting for us. And we ha- we saw a snapshot of our fans from the first game last year in yeah. the stadium. There was like 30 fans there. <laughs> and now we have close to, you know, 3,500, 4,000 people in that, you know, behind the goal, just going crazy in one year, in one year. Um, I don't know. So I think that if you if you want to experience something really, really authentic, some some place with a lot of history, um, some place that has uh, that's something that's that's you're going to say you saw them when they were in the fourth division. You know, I saw this team when they were in the fourth division. Now they're in Serie A or something like that. I think that would also be great for your fans. Absolutely. Um, we spoke a little bit off air uh, about superstitions and, and superstitions in Italy are crazy. I, I saw a clip on your show, Mark, live with Kelly and Mark, that Campo Basso management all go to eat at the same restaurant uh, every game as a form of superstition. First of all, I have to ask, is that still true? And also, are there any other superstitions that you guys have, either personally or as a team? No, absolutely. I, I was there two weeks ago. We sat in the same. We sat in the same um, restaurant, albeit it was in a different room, which I was a little concerned about. It wasn't in the <laughs> room. Matt. Yeah, Matt, I know. We got to work on that. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but you know, we won the championship. I know, it's true. They took us in a different. He's you know, right. we were we were a bigger party. Maybe that's what it was. We were too big to be in that back room. So we definitely do that. That is true. And also, um, now we have a little tradition of watching these games at my townhouse here yeah. in New York. And Matt makes a trek from uh, from his town. <laughs> and we watched the first game we watched together. It was me, Matt, and Nicola, who's uh, the vice president of the team. And uh, we beat Samp 1-0. Um, and then the final... What's that? 84th minute. 84th minute. And, and so we, the next time we could all do it together was just a few weeks ago when we played um, Aquila. And Matt said, listen, Nicola's going to come. Like, great, the three of us upstairs. <laughs> he goes, yeah, can my brother-in-law come? And I said, mm, Matt, Matt, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say no, but if we lose, he can never come again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so awesome. I said that to him when we walked in. I was laughing. I was like, you know, you, you lose, you can't come back here. He was like, he was a really nice guy, and we lost. So, Matt, please don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, when, when, you, when you go to that restaurant, do you all have this? Like, do you have a special dish that you always have as well, or like, how far do you take this stuff? I have. Uh, they have something called pizza minestra there, which is like a soup. It's like a it's like a soup with vegetables and it's real hearty and wholesome. As Mark knows, I, I can't eat on game days. I can't mm. eat. It's just like my stomach is like a knot. Mm. So I do drink a little bit, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I do drink a little bit. Our, our superstitions here on the pod are, are probably even more severe. And Nima gets really yeah. wound up. I mean, my <laughs> my my mum's side of the family from Naples, so you can imagine that's where that's where I that's where I get it from. But um, yeah, like Nim, I won't let Nima if it's a team like if Italy are playing, I won't let Nima um, predict that Italy are going to win. <laughs> I won't let him do it because that 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 just jinxes it. And I remember before the Euro final, the Euro twenty twenty final. He, he kind of sort of said, oh, I think England are going to win. And I was so happy. I was just like, I was delighted. <laughs> because I thought, oh, Italy going to win now. And Did you say he's a kiss of death? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, moving on to, um, I wanted to, when when Matt first came onto the pod the first time, we, we kind of went back and looked at 
uh, Matt's uh, childhood and, and his connection with, with Italy and Calcio and kind of the teams he liked and who his favourite first players were. So I wanted to do something similar with, with, with you, Mark. And I mean, first of all, as you said, you're, you're half Italian. You're, you're, your mother's Italian, right? I believe you're Mexican. Your father's Mexican. Yeah. Uh, but you were born in Spain. But you said you 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 were brought brought up part of your childhood in Italy. Is that yeah? Is that we, yes, my de- my mom my father met my mom at a party in Italy. He was working at one of the uh, U.S. NATO bases, I think, near Naples or something like that. And he came down for uh, for a party. He met my mom, and they then the rest is history. So, um, and then they moved to Spain as I was being born. So we I was born in Spain. Um, and then he had to go back. We went back to Sardinia after that for a couple of years and then ended up in Puglia the last few years before I, before I came over. So yeah, my first, my first memories, my first like vivid memories are, are of living in Italy. You know, those, those, uh, you know, um, kids playing soccer, you know, in the calcetto in the, in the, you know, in the street. Um, but, uh, my mom is a huge, obviously my dad being Mexican, um, you know, huge soccer fans, football fans They're you know, so that was, I was, I was raised with that, with that whole mentality. So soccer was your first sport then? Was that the, the first? Yeah, sport I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. That and baseball, but soccer would, to me, felt a little exotic, especially living in the Midwest back in like 1977. It felt a little <laughs> slightly exotic. You know, uh, albeit you know, I guess Canalia and Pele came over and made it a little, a little less mm. exotic. But, um, but yeah, I remember having those. I remember I, I could always remember Shirea was on my wall with, with Juventus. He played for Juventus, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Shirea. Yeah. I always, I always remember his name, and obviously the you know the 1982, uh, all those guys. But Juventus, and I, I was kind of a bandwagoner to be honest. Whoever was doing really, really well, I would like follow and when we'd go back to Italy to visit in the summers and uh, the month of August, um, I loved it because I would go to the little um, magazine shops, you know, where you get the giornale and I would get my Italian mag, like soccer magazines. And I was collecting those little stickers back, back, way back, you know, when they first started those stickers for the World Cup teams. And, panini, yeah, the Panini yeah, stickers. Yeah, yeah, but I just loved it because I, you know, I would, the extent of the, my soccer international soccer exposure would only be like you know some off obviously the world cup you know some news i don't remember exactly how much how much live italian i would see but for there was a show on pbs called soccer made in germany it's it was it's, matt do you remember that show i don't i don't uh soccer made in germany on what? pbs <laughs> and every now and then they'd show a euro they'd show a euro uh, i'm sorry um a Champions League game of like Bayern Munich or one of the great German teams playing Real Madrid. And I got to know who Hugo Sanchez was. Uh, and my dad, my dad uh, was, he's Mexican. You should, and I, I wore number nine because of Hugo Sanchez. He's like, that guy, he's, he's a guy to get behind. But it was slim pickings back in the, you know, mid, mid seventies to, to the early eighties uh, to watch, to watch your Italian teams. Every now and then, you know, you catch some weird, channel yeah that would a Serie A game but it was very difficult yeah I yeah. think Rai 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 had it I remember watching Rai through like the uh the grainy feed on my grandfather's lap it's like espresso <laughs> smell of espresso and then yeah. back now it's in, endearing back then it's like you can't yeah. you can't follow it. I actually remember nine I think it was 1995 uh Nima are you a Milan fan or Inter I can't remember Inter, 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 Inter. <laughs> Um, so I remember 1995, ESPN picked up the Champions League final between Ajax and AC Milan. I think it was 95 mm. or 94. Mm. And I remember my one of my good friends, Victor Vanderlot, at the time, was from the Netherlands. And I cut school. I know I cut. I cut religious class after school to go watch the game at his house. And I had the nuns called my parents and my mother. <laughs> And my mother, my mother was like gonna give it to me afterward. I'm like, I was like, you got an Italian team in the Champions League final. What do you think I'm gonna go to religion? <laughs> she actually, she actually let me off the hook that night. Guys, I, I remember um, when I first got my job here in New York. I must have been 24 years old. Yeah, I was 20. I was 24 years old, uh, and I had been on the soap opera for a minute, like three or four months, five months, and we got Christmas vacation two weeks. And I also, in my contract, I had two weeks additional. And I said, listen, can I put a week on each of these two weeks and take a month off? They're like, go ahead, do it. That's great. 
I was new, but I, I had rolled the dice and they said, do it. So I went to Italy. I went to Italy. And I remember I was in Bergamo for a while. I went to go see a buddy in Bergamo. I was in, in, Cal in Calabria to see some cousins. But I went back up to Bergamo and we went to, um, we went over to Milan and we saw Milan against, I forgot who it was, but it was the year that George Weah was, was given the Palando. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we just happened to scalp tickets, my buddy and I, that I grew up in the States with, we scalp tickets and we had to go see, I'm like, wow, what a, what a lucky, what a lucky game to go see. That's George Weah. And I knew who George Weah was. Flash forward a year. Uh, the MLS just got started and I'm living in New York. I'm married now. My buddy comes to visit me that I went and stayed with in Bergamo and he, you know, he met Kelly and the MLS, their first all-star game was MLS against the world stars. I don't know if you guys know this or not. So they, I mean, um, Luthar Mateus, hmm. um, not Rikyar, but the other guy with the glasses, uh, from the Dutch team, I think he oh, played. Oh, Davids. Da Davids. Davids yeah. played. Um, George Weah. And I'm like, dude, my, my, I'm like, Mike, we saw this guy. It might have been less than, it might have, it, it was within the year. We're seeing him again. And so, and I got special passes because it was an ABC uh, production. So we went to the reception afterwards and we're like hanging out with all these soccer players. I'm like, oh my, this is the most amazing thing. But because of that, we missed the bus back to New York City, so we like we went out. We went out. We're at Giant Stadium. Like, how are we getting home? There's no Uber. There's no Uber. We don't have cell phones. Like, no. how, how are we getting home? And just then, this car pulls up in front of us in the like in the parking lot, and this lady, who recognized me from uh, All My Children, says, "Hey, are you you're Mateo from All My Children?" I said, "Yes, I am." She said, "What are you guys? What are you doing here?" I said, "We're watching the game." She was like, "All right, well, I'm going back in the city. I'm just waiting for my husband. I'll, you guys want to ride?" I'm like, "Yeah." And it's a lady. We don't, you know, she's a little bit older than us. We're like, fine. And we sit in the back seat of this kind of this beat up car. I don't remember it being nice, right? So we're sitting in the back seat, and George Weah, no, gets in the front seat of the car. No way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Whoa. <laughs> and we're like, my buddy, my 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 childhood friend that we played on soccer teams together, we're like, <laughs> but, <laughs> we couldn't talk. I mean, it was the most amazing thing. We, we said 10 words on the way back into the <laughs> That's so cool. That is awesome. Amazing. You're not so gonna my, be story, story. my story is better than your story of getting beat by the nuns, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's an incredible story. Amazing story. So we can see here, uh, Mark, just how much of a big soccer fan you were since since childhood. Um, you, you did kind of mention before that you 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 played the game a little bit as a kid. Um, were you was that in America? Was that in Italy? I mean, were you, how good were you? Did you want to be a soccer player? I mean, I, I got a scholarship. I played. I got a scholarship to go to Notre Dame. Um, I was there for a year and a half. I never saw the field. Um, I was the ball boy for most games. That's what they made freshmen do. I was not good. I was not good. I was good enough to get a look at you know, university division one, but I wasn't that good. Um, and there was no pro league at that point anymore in the United States. But every time I'd go back to Italy to visit family, they would organize a game. They would organize a game because they knew how much I wanted to play. And so I just remember the level, the level was just so much better in Italy at, I mean, even the little kids were just so much, just more sophisticated with their football. Yeah, they were. Matt, did you play? Did you play when you were younger? Were you any good? I, I played until I was about 14 or 15. I actually have a funny story. My, uh, my grandfather, that's, that's where I, that's where I learned soccer from. And my passion for soccer was all, was all, all came from him. He played professionally in Italy before he immigrated here. Oh, and, wow. um, you know, he was like a, he was like a soccer snob, like Italian, like, you know, <laughs> tactician, got the notch, you, you know, in Love Italy it. and Mark and I deal with this all the time. I mean, you got to play the game the right way to make it in Italy, you know? Um, so my grandfather was watching me play once and he used to never like to watch to come, to come watch me play. He just hated it. So one time <laughs> my parents were away for the weekend. He's babysitting me. I must've been like nine or 10 years old. He came to watch me play. I scored a goal. And I took my shirt off. Okay. 
And this little Italian guy, my grandfather, came and he pulled me off the field. <laughs> he embarrassed me in front of all my friends and he made me walk home. I just he, I left the field and he never he never came and watched me play ever again. That because you took, your, because you took your shirt off? Yeah, this was disrespect. And this was like in the late eighties, you know. So <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't like a big thing to celebrate that way. It was just. Right. Like, um, so he made me that's walk home. And that was the last that's time. like you, 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 you were the first Brandy Chastain. <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> that was the last time you ever saw me play. <laughs> yeah. Some of the stories I could tell you about when I was a kid. And my dad <laughs> we and, all have and, them. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, I can't even broadcast most of them. Um, <laughs> Seriously, though, guys, it's it's true. Like in in Italy, it's a religion, soccer. Mm, I mean, it's a yeah. you know, it's a reflection of who you are as a human being. You know, they mm. take it so personally. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's true, and it changes you as a person when you. I mean, I guess this is for all sports, really. But there's a person off the pitch, and there's a person on the pitch. Uh, yeah. I think for a lot, for a lot of people, for a lot of sportsmen, but definitely in football. Mm. Uh, when I used to, when I used to play, and I played like at semi professional level, I was a totally different person on the pitch. Completely, <laughs> <laughs> there's people that hated me, and then when they saw me like in real life, they thought, oh, "Actually, you're already quite quite a yeah. nice guy." <laughs> <laughs> Mark and I, we, we see this stuff all the time. Like our, team, our team captains and stuff, they're the nicest guys in the world off the pitch. And then you yeah. see them on the pitch and, you know, they know how to, they're a little dirty. They know what to, they yeah. know how to get, they know how to get, you know, they know how to draw a foul, get to pick up the other guy, pick up a yellow card. They know all the little tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, just a couple of last quick questions on, on this, Mark. Um, so what, first of all, what was your first um, soccer memory? Like when I say soccer memory, I mean like for for me personally, it was Italian ninety. Um, that was my first memory. That's the first time I can actually remember watching, uh, you know, a tournament or, or a team that I was supporting. Um, yeah, I think you know, I think the massive one would have been eighty two. Um, and I, again, I probably had some other, uh, you know, I remember playing in a bunch of games as a kid, and my dad was my coach, so I had a lot of memory about a lot of memories about that. Uh, and then I think the most like meaningful one, what, what would it would have been in 1982 when Italy won the world cup. Mm. And I remember my, I was, I was like running around the yard and I wasn't not, I, I think I watched the first half of the game and then, you know, I was, a, I was 10, 11 years old. So I really wasn't, you know, like super, super, super into it. But cause I had been watching a lot of games for, for that world cup, but it was then, um, when my mom came running outside, I think she was, I think she was probably crying that the Italians won. Cause she's, you know, she was, she was probably homesick as well living in the States at that point. Um, but that really kind of cemented how cool it was to have this Italian background and how good they are historically and what great athletes they are um, and how cool they look, you know, with their kids, the kid that you oh, have yeah. out there and their gelled hair and they're all singing, Ita you know, the Italian national anthem. Um, and then after that, you know, 86, I think 86 was, was Mexico city, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that by, by that time I was full on, you know, mm. monitoring every team with every game. But I think my, the first massive memory must have been that my mom, that when we won, when Italy won in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. What a memory to have as well. And, mm. and who, did you have a favorite player? You, you mentioned Shirer before you had a poster of him up, but did, any others? In other times, I mean, I love Paolo Rossi um, through the years. <clears throat> Obviously, Maldini. I love Gattuso so much. <laughs> yeah. Because that was kind of like how I played. You know, I'm 5'8". I'm not that tall. <laughs> um, and I, I was the smallest guy in the pitch. And I always had to be make myself – They, had, you know, I, I always made it a point that everybody understood that I was going to be there all game. And like, <laughs> it was going to be – it was going to be fun and then not fun. And so I, I loved just the way he played. Um, and again, at an early, early age, you know, I took a lot of, I took a lot of, um, uh, pride in Hugo, not, he's not an Italian player, but in, in Hugo Sanchez, yeah. you know, cause he was a Mexican playing for Real Madrid. And I just thought that was, and he was great, great, great striker. He was an amazing player. I think for me, he was probably the best ever at bicycle kicks. Yeah. Scissor kicks. He was, he was the yeah. master, That's the right. master of that. Um, okay. And just finally, before I pass you back on to Nima, um, so, you, so your wife, uh, Kelly Reaper, who, who you co-host the, the 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 talk show as I said before with, live with with Kelly and Mark, um, and and Kelly is a is also uh, a co-owner or part of the ownership group at, at Campo Basso. Um, does 
does Kelly get into the soccer? How much is, is she into it? Is she a passionate fan? She gets into it as much as in as much as that she knows that I'm watching fourth division football at 8.30 in the morning every single <laughs> morning. We're empty nesters now. And so she could be doing a lot of things at 8.30 in the morning. She knows that without a with unapologetic, before Matt started coming over, but I that was on and I was watching it and she was just like, you know, she was scrolling her news items. So she's supportive. She's a, she's a good supportive uh, uh, partner. She honestly thought that we were buying a house in Italy. <laughs> and I said, no, we're buying, I, I'm pretty sure I said, we're buying a piece, piece of a soccer team. And she goes, no, I think you said house. <laughs> Well, a stadium is bigger than a house. Exactly. <laughs> a nice yard. Yeah. Uh, no, no she's, she's supportive. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, she, did, she met when Matt. One more thing, when Matt, we we're looking at um, uniforms and and designs for the new uniforms. He asked Kelly if she'd like to look at at the uniforms, and so Matt was coming over that day, and she's like, "What time are we looking at the costumes?" <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> she, had some good she, had some good, she had some good ideas, right, Matt? It's oh important. my god! Listen, it's important. You've got to think of, the, of that side of things. Yeah. Let I mean, me just say two. Let me just say two things. Number one, um, Kelly, competitor, competitor. I mean, might be the most competitive of of, of any of us in the group. Mm. The Agreed. Second, the second is that going back to what Mark was saying about his favorite players. One thing I've learned. I've learned a few things about what not to say to Mark in our partnership and never, ever, ever, ever compare any player to Rino Gattuso. <laughs> it does not end well. No. <laughs> it does not end well. Yeah, Matt's like, he's like our Gattuso. I go, Matt. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> one Gattuso. Uh, <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, well, a question to both of you guys. I mean, it hasn't happened much recently, thank God, uh, but I'm sure it could happen or well, probably will more so in the future as as the as you go up through the the, the, the leagues and the level increases. But if Campo Basso, God forbid, were to lose a game or get a bad result, how do you both react to it? Does it ruin your whole weekend like it does for me when, for example, Iran or Inter lose? It just ruins the week. <laughs> you go, Matt. Oh God, yes, it's it the whole the whole it kills the whole week, mm. whole Doesn't mood. It? Mm. Your whole mood. It's and this is this is why soccer ownership too is like it's insanity because even in even in the best of scenarios, what what will a team win? Like Inter is going to win what Nima maybe sixty percent of their matches this year, yeah. Yeah. right? So you're basically signing up for something. You know, forty percent in the best of cases, forty percent of your life is going to be complete misery. <laughs> I love it. I love that. <laughs> for me, for me, I um, once it's done, it's done. Um, it doesn't bother me too much. It bothers me for, it, it, I usually, you know, Kelly can tell if I'm coming down and get some food afterwards, she's like, oh, you guys lost, huh? Like, <laughs> or I'm in a great mood. And then, and then I'm, then I'm, I'm over it. The ties bother me. Some ties bother me longer than some of the losses because mm -hmm. the ones that we've lost, we've like, we kind of like deserve, you know, we kind of like, we lost. Okay. We lost. Um, but a tie when you're up to nothing. No, oh. that stays that I'm, st I'm still not over it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. We try, yeah. we obviously, you know, we, we try to learn too, you know, so Mark and I will sit there with the rest of the group midweek, you know, he mentioned Nicola, Nicola is a big part. Nicola Chin Chon's a big huge. part of the yeah, group huge. as well. You know, it's the first 24 hours is tough. You know, it's tough to digest, but then Tuesday, Wednesday roll around and, you know, you start mm -hmm. thinking about, okay, what, what lessons can we take away um, we, we talked to the coaches and the, the, uh, the coaching staff and the um, director sportivo, the sporting director once a week. So for us, you know, the postmortems help us kind of move forward and make improvements, but it's hard. It's hard when you lose to sit down and say, you know, let us take some positives from this, but um, you need to you know that you need to in order to, to improve. I wouldn't, this is, I, that's why I think the main difficulty I would have with, with what you guys do is exactly that because I would sulk. I would sulk for a few days and, and, and I need to have that grieving process. You know what I mean? Like we just have to finish sulking and then I can look forward and start looking. But, but if you, you're doing it in a professional way, well, you got a meeting at Monday morning, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta let that go. 
I've got better with it. I mean, when I was a kid, I was the worst loser ever. I was so. I remember when I remember when France beat Italy in the Euro 2000 final. I when they scored that. in injury time to take it to the fourth minute of injury time, and then mm. they won it. After that game, I I I went round my house. Anything French in the house got torn up. My French. <laughs> I was still I was still at school, and I ripped my French dictionary. I had to go out and buy a new French dictionary because <laughs> I tore everything French in the in the house up. I uh, the referee of that game, Anders Frisk, he's from Gothenburg, and and every time I meet him in Gothenburg, I tell him, where did you find those minutes? The game was over. Why didn't you just play your whistle? <laughs> and and he, and he says, honestly, it's not, I, I didn't add any more than it was there. He just, he's become a bit of a joke now. But yeah. France got no, the best of us a few, a few of those times, right? 90, didn't yeah. they beat us in 98 too? Yes, on penalties. Yeah. Penalties, right? Penalties, yeah. Yeah. We beat them in the World Cup. 06 yes, made it all worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah we absolutely. got our revenge. Yeah. Right, before we finish up with the game, I wanted to ask you both, I mean, staying on the topic with the Azzurri, what do you guys think about Italy's chances at Euro 2024? Start with you, uh, Mark, and then go to you, Matt. Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I guess I guess the question would be, what what did you think their chances were four years ago? What, I, I didn't know what their chances were four years ago before they started. What was, what was kind of, what was the thought process? For me, they were going to win it. I thought they okay. were outstanding. Well, then I don't, I don't think we're going to win it. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. <laughs> oh, no, I, don't worry. I, thought, I didn't think they would win it. I thought semi final was realistic. Okay, but they look I good. Think, I didn't think they certainly weren't favorites, though. If you, if, wow. if you, you guys thought they were going to win in 2000, I thought they were. I thought I remember after Mancini was appointed, I was thrilled. That's true. They had the, yeah, because I, his, his work with talent after Ventura, there was nothing there. And I was so happy that he, they'd appointed Mancini because of how good he is with the talents. And I was looking down at the under 21s and I saw the Chiesas, the Barellas. I saw all these fantastic players coming up. And I was like, well, this, this is a golden generation and this is it. And I think with Mancini was the right man. So I was I was very happy about that appointment. Yeah, they played such a beautiful style. It was it was mm. so entertaining. It was they were they had a great imagination. That midfield, oh, yeah. they, they played beautiful. amazing. Mm. Yeah, what do you think, Matt? I think uh, I never think Italy is going to win. I I, I I stopped that. I was disappointed so many times as a kid. I remember mm. 1990. 90 oh. was a year. 90 oh, was a yeah. year. It was it was in Italy, right? Mm. Yeah. And then 94, I thought, was our year, too. And then, you know, penalty kicks. Then, then 98 was a heartbreaker. 2006, I feel like, never even happened in many ways. You know? <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously I root for them. <laughs> but I, my hopes are not, uh, not, not incredibly high. What about you guys? I cool. think, I think quarterfinal is yeah. possible. I, I'm, not, I'm not confident of going too much further. I think... I think in terms of the players that we have available, we're definitely we're definitely not one of the best teams. I think I think France and England, in terms of the quality yeah. of the players, they're on their own level. They're ahead of everyone. But after that, I think that if we're we, you know, we, we go into the tournament well, we don't have any more injuries, you know, I, I think we can fight it out with with anyone else on our day. Um, but I think that we are lacking the top quality in attack. I think I think we, we don't have the top quality attackers. And also in midfield, which was like you said, Mark, Mark was our strong point in we we had the best midfield definitely at the Euro twenty twenty. Now, you know, Verratti is not there anymore, he's gone to the Middle East. Um Jorginho is you know, he's past his best. He's still good, but he's past his best. Um we've still got Barella from twenty twenty. So we've lost kind of two of the three. And then Tonali, who was kind of like the new big midfielder we have he's now got a betting ban he's going to miss the tournament so we've lost kind of our strong point of the team we've been weakened where where we were really strong but one thing I think we do have is we've got in my opinion we've got the best manager in the tournament we've got Luciano Spalletti mm. and now in modern football the best managers in the world generally manage club teams now rather than international teams and mm. uh, we're lucky that we've actually got one of the best club managers in the world managing our national team so I think he can give us something extra which some of the other nations I, I'm putting my hopes in Spalletti basically to, to do to do something magical yeah I just want to echo what, what Carlos said I, I I think that look I have been saying this is 20 you know since the World Cup in Russia that I think something changed for for England there and I, and I was after after having watched that I felt like they're going to win a tournament 
at some point. And I think now I look at England and I look at France and I think they're head and shoulders above everyone else. I think England are going to win this tournament. Obviously, it's played in Germany and with their history and, and, and you know, beating Germany is always a special thing for the English. So, And of course, they've got Jude Bellingham, who I think is probably the best footballer on earth. So I, I think England are going to win it. Um, yeah. But I don't mind. For me, I want Italy to win the World Cup. Yeah, if That's Italy can play like Lazio did against Copenhagen uh, two days ago and squeak out a win and then like in the last <laughs> and, and, get, and get like 30 shots on goal against them like all game. Who I mean, cares how we do it? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And then like squeak one out, then we're gonna be, we'll are gonna we get to, get past the quarterfinals. I'm just like your your nonno, Namat. I I'm Catenaccio all the way. I don't. I, I just park the bus, the boat, the plane. I'm I'm too. I'm much more conservative. Carlo wants to play this tiki taka nonsense. I I, I want to. I I don't. Give me the old days. Oh, I love that. That's hit, awesome. hit him on the counter. Yes, 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 yes. It hurts them so much more. They have all the possession. They can't create anything. You hit them on the counter, and then you shut the shop down. It's is how you guys play important to you? Is the style of the play important to, to you guys, how Campo Basso play, or is it results first? Great question. I think, I mean, look, ultimately, we're here to win the league. And they say, Serie D, you know, it doesn't matter how you win, just win. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't win pretty. But, yeah, I mean – um, it was tough, too, because the coach we hired, uh, I don't know if you know Rosario Pergolizzi, he played with Maradona, the Napoli Maradona era, and wow. he actually, he coached Palermo both in Serie A and then in Serie D, they hired him to bring them back up to Serie C, um, and he's like a classic tactician, um, but, you know, he obviously inherited personnel that wasn't all his, so he's done, I think, a masterful job of just kind of figuring out how to work with the talent he was given and um you know he's really developed i think an identity and a culture um that we, we we were probably lacking right mark earlier in the season i would think yeah for sure yeah um i know i agree in Serie d it's just win baby just win and let's 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 move on it's so hard to get promoted uh you know just one yeah. team and seven girones get gets you know out of each of what those those girones get it promoted so yeah, sometimes you're looking at like, wow, this is, you know, you want, you want to, you, 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 I love to watch beautiful, beautiful football as well, but um, a win is a win for sure. For sure. Um, before you let you guys go, uh, we play this rapid fire game. We play with all our guests. Um, I'll, myself and Carlo will give you one or two options. You pick one. Um, Matt, I'll start with you first, and then Matt, Mark, you go straight after. So, first question everyone's been asked this Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Messi. Messi. Oh, we're doing Diego this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah, Diego Maradona or Pele? Oh, Pele. Wow, Pele. The Statue of Liberty or the Colosseo in Rome? <laughs> Guys, we live in America. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> Statue of Liberty, man. <laughs> I want to stay in the good graces of our friends at the Italian Federation. So I'll go to the same. Nice. Okay, okay. nice. nice. Good nice. odds. Godfather one or Godfather two? Two. Two. Yeah, I'm two. two. I'm two as well. Um, the two is the one where De Niro spoke Italian, right? Yeah. 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 yeah not the not the best, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the Sopranos or Breaking Bad? Oh, God. I have to give respect to Sopranos because I, th I think without the Sopranos, there'd be no Breaking Bad. Good answer. <laughs> I have a new appreciation for the Sopranos recently. It's like I refound the Sopranos and I didn't, I, I never appreciated it for the, the writing was incredible. In the Sopranos, Amazing. So. Genius. Yeah. I'm Sopranos, but I think the ending of Breaking Bad was, was, was better. I, I mean, we're Breaking talking, Bad, we're talking like this and this, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Both amazing though. Who is the most ruthless mob boss? Tony Soprano or Camilla Vargas? Camilla <laughs> Vargas is from the Queen of the South, which, Vargas. which, which Mark Contreras was in. Camilla Vargas, she had me killed. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so pasta or pizza? I would be pizza. Oh, yeah, I would say I would say pizza. I get a okay. pizza every day for the rest of my life. I'd be fine with it. <laughs> rigatoni is, you know, you talk about if you if you're on death row and you have one last meal, rigatoni bolognese would be would be mine. I so I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go pasta. I'm gonna go pasta. Okay, pasta for Mark. Right, this one's important. So, 
these are from uh from from my family's cake shop from La Rondine in Bedford, which I was telling you guys about before we before we start recording. So, do you prefer a cannoli? I'm going to hold it up to the camera. You can see. Can you see this? Yep. There nice. You there you go. That looks amazing. So you've got a cannoli with ricotta, or you got a sfogliatella. You can hold this up. Oh my god. Oh. There you go. So That's cannoli or sfogliatella. That's difficult. Uh, for me, the sfogliatella is the best, the best pastry in the history of pastry. So <laughs> I, I actually would fly to Naples just to get a sfogliatella, and I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, it crazy that I think that's normal that you do that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> same for you, Mark. Same, same. Svoliatella. Yeah. And Nima, go on. Who, who are you? Oh, Svoliatella, I think. I think. Svoliatella. But the thing is, I love cannolis as well. Like, that's the thing. I can't choose. Like, <laughs> don't make me choose because I don't want to. Sicily <laughs> um, versus Naples, right? That's the, yeah, yeah. the debate. So, who um, will win? Svoliatella for both of you guys then when you, when you come and visit in England. Done. So, who will win the Champions League this season? What do you think? Who's left? Give me the give me the teams that are left. Um, Inter, uh, Arsenal, Porto, Real Madrid, PSG, Bayern Munich, uh, Lazio. Um, who else is it? Um, Manchester City, Manchester City, City, of City. course. Yeah, City, of course. Um, and Napoli, Barcelona. Not those teams. Hmm. Not Napoli or Barcelona, I'm sorry. Hmm. Um, I, I'm a City fan, so I, I but I think I think they have a good shot. I don't see anybody beating City. Hmm. Pep has Pep has some he's got some dynasty going now. Hmm. What about you guys? I, I, I would agree. I, I think it's hard to look past City, but I do think that Inter have got a chance. I really do. I really? think that they ran City so close last season. In fact, in my opinion, they were the better team in the final, mm. uh, and they were very unlucky. And I think they've they've got so they've taken so much from getting to that final. Who did they draw? The for this, team. Who did they draw for this round? Atletico Madrid. Sorry, I forgot to mention them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Inter have got a chance. I do, and I think I that, that. I like they that. basically they basically got the Serie A title wrapped up already really 10 points if they win tonight we're recording this before they play Salernitana um and uh, you know so they're going to be able to maybe rotate a little bit before the and Man City have got uh, probably them and Liverpool kind of toe and toe until the end of the season so maybe who knows mm. oh I'm next I know um who wins who wins in a match Campo Basso FC or Wrexham Campobasso. <laughs> in, 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 um, in, in the 94th minute. Oh, love it. <laughs> love that. At the very death. Love that. Um, okay, so Totti, Del Piero, or Roberto Baggio? Oh, man. Matt? I don't think anyone can... I think as amazing as... To, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm a Roma fan by, by blood. Uh, but for me, Baggio is the greatest one of the greatest players of all time. Yeah, same. I agree. Hmm. So, final question, probably the most uh, controversial question you'll be asked today. Um, pineapple on pizza, food heaven or food hell? No, we just did We just did this, an article on this on my uh, chat show in the morning about how certain things you don't order in Italy. You do not <laughs> do it. You don't order a cappuccino past a certain time at night. They may, you, you, you offend them. You don't put... You don't put Parmesan cheese on anything that has white, so like uh, fettuccine, whatever. Like yeah. Alfredo, that's that's bad. It's 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 low class. <laughs> and there's a there is a place I believe it's in Naples mm. that has just started doing pineapple with a some type of some type of ham, and yeah. it's causing a big uproar. I like the combo, honestly. <laughs> I'm sad to say I like I know it's sacrilegious. I don't I don't I never order it. <laughs> But if somebody has it and it's the only thing to eat, or there's a few left, I'd rather have that than something else. Sometimes, I think that's the irony of it all. P pineapple on pizza. When you think about it, like it doesn't actually for me, it doesn't sound so bad. But I would never actually order it if I have <laughs> if I'm faced with the choice on a menu. I, I just don't see myself ordering it. That's it. So you've got all these options, 
all yeah. of them amazing. Why would you go for pineapple yeah. pizza? <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you seen the video, Carlo, of uh, the them pranking the Neapolitans? It's so funny. With the pizza delivery. Have you seen so that? Funny. Mark, have you seen I, that? No. What how is it? Recent, uh, it's how recent was, so was this a recent one or a couple of years ago? Yeah, a couple of years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, I think I was yeah. remember. They have, yeah. these, they have these people in in Naples who order ordering so a pizza funny. delivery and they deliver them pineapple pizza instead of the, instead of whatever they ordered. <laughs> but some of them were like borderline violent to these delivery guys. Got <laughs> angry. Delivery. Like yeah. so funny. It Italians. The funniest thing I know about Italians and food is how Italians get personally offended. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's so funny. Like when you see that, it's like no one else gets personally yeah. offended. If you mix <laughs> things, it's so, so funny. Um, Thank you so much, Matt and Mark, for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best for the rest of the season. We're always cheering for you guys to get promoted. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can have you on both again next season when you're in Serie C. Yeah, let's, let's hope so. It's always it's always a pleasure uh, speaking to you guys. Thanks for all the support. Godalo, don't don't forget, we're winning the, let's win this league this year, and then we're coming to uh, Bedford for our celebration cake. Nima, oh, will you absolutely. Me? Guys, thank you so much. Nima, will you do me a favor? Sure. Will you say Samp is going to win the league? <laughs> there you okay, go. I'll do, for you, I will. Samp, Samp will win Serie D. There we go. Is that okay? That's a victory parade. <laughs> Nim is going to go mad at me after this. Yes, so I, am. Hate I, am. I, I hate when you do that because it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Like everyone, else, okay. everyone else, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back uh, on Monday for a new episode. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Appreciate you guys. Ciao. ciao.